from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Veeam on 2020 online. Of course, instead of all gathering together in Las Vegas, we're getting to talk to participants of the community uh, where they are around the globe. Happy to welcome to the program. First time guest on the program. He's part of the uh, opening keynote, I'm sure most of you saw. Simon Kafkin Hansen, Chief Technology Officer for VMware Solutions inside of IBM. Simon, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So, you know, obviously, you know, we know IBM quite well. We had the Cube at, uh, you know, the virtual events, both Red Hat Summit and IBM Think, uh, not too long in the past there. Uh, talking a lot about, you know, the open hybrid cloud. Uh, many of the messages that I hear from Veeam uh, remind me of what I heard at their environments. It's, you know, multi-cloud environment. We need flexibility in what we're doing. We, you know, need to, you know, of course, you know, data is such an important piece of what's going on. Uh, maybe before we get into it too much, give us a little bit about, you know, your role there, uh, where you fit into that whole discussion of what IBM is uh, with cloud. So, um, Stu, yeah, um, the Chief Technology Officer of IBM, of VMware Solutions on the IBM Cloud, primarily um, involved and um, helped create the partnership that exists between IBM and VMware today. Um, basically, um, providing automated solutions um, for our clients and automated secure solutions for our clients around the VMware and the IBM Cloud infrastructure space. Yeah, well, it, 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 Simon, that's, that's you know interesting stuff. You've got some good history there. Uh, may, maybe you might remind our audience. You know, I remember at VMworld before there was a big partnership uh, that VMware made with a certain public cloud uh, provider um, that gets talked about a lot. Uh, IBM was the first, and if I saw you know correctly, I'd love you for you to be able to provide the data behind it. Uh, there are more you know VMware. Uh, customers on the IBM cloud than any other cloud is what I believe the data I saw at Think. So bring us in a little bit more, ex explain that relationship. So yes, um, we, were, we were as IBM at the beginning of, um, beginning of all of this, I mean, VMware and IBM have um, had a long relationship. And in fact, um, IBM manages over 850,000 predominantly VMware workloads on premise and have done for the last 10 plus years. But in the latest iteration of this partnership, we, um, we brought together our automation and um, a codified experience from dealing with these, um, um, our client accounts around the world and brought that expertise along with VMware's product set to align this um, automated SDDC stack on um, cloud platforms. And first to market with that automated SDDC stack called VMware Cloud Foundation, First to market out, and um, we've had a great ongoing relationship since then. Um, have um, it's really resonated with many of our clients and our enterprise clients out there. All right. Well, well, Simon, one one of the most important pieces of that you know VMware SDTC message is that uh, I have VMware. I know how I manage that environment, and it's got a really robust ecosystem. So, you know, of course, Veeam started exclusively in the VMware environments, now lives across many environments, but, uh, the, you know, the comment I've made on, on some of these interviews for Veeam on is, wherever the VMware solution and VMware cloud goes, Veeam can just go along for the ride, really, if it were. There's obviously some integration work and testing, but help, yeah, help dig into a little bit, you know, what that means for, you know, solutions like Veeam tying into uh, what VMware is doing and what VMware is doing in, in the IBM cloud. Well, um, particularly at the beginning of this relationship, part of this um, partnership with VMware was its rich partner ecosystem. And I was, I was given the remit and had the luxury to choose um, the best of the best product sets out there, um, which wasn't necessarily IBM's products in this particular space. Obviously, we chose Veeam for backup. I mean, Veeam's reputation out there is the backup. It's known as the market leader for, for the backup of its actual workloads. So it, it was very important for us to embrace that ecosystem. And um, it's been a great partnership from the very, very beginning. Um, getting the backup products out into our platform and as we've done more recently, bringing in the new enhancements like Veeam Cloud Connect to deal with 
data replication and more use cases around migration and the movement of data in a hybrid cloud sense. And Veeam has been right there with us every step of the way. Yeah, so, so Simon, you're a CTO, so bring us in a little bit architecturally because when I think about hybrid cloud or even you know, having to move my data uh, between uh, you know, different data centers, you know, there are you know, the physics challenges uh, and you know, sometimes I can you know, get closer, I can put high bandwidth, low latency connections through there. And then there's the financial considerations. Um, so give us how we have to think about that. Uh, you know, what is data movement in 2020? Uh, you know, and what, what, what considerations do we have to have here? And how does IBM maybe differentiate a little bit from some others? So um, I'll answer your first question. I'll answer some of the, la the last questions first. What was what does data movement in 2020 look like? Well, to be perfectly honest, Stu, um, we never imagined what would happen this year, but data mobility and the movement of data in a hybrid scenario has never been more acute or prevalent because of the, the stage that the world is currently in and the conditions that we're living in today. Um, being able to use familiar-based tooling that represents um, an, what is used in an on-premise state over in the cloud, enabling Veeam or people who have existing investments in Veeam to use that tooling for multiple different use cases, not just backup or not just backup, but that actual data replication functionality has become ever more prevalent in these cases. I was saying similar messages back in 2019 and 2018, and as long as, long as back as 2010, I feel as though. Um, I look at that, that's been almost a decade now, talking about the need or the capabilities of hybrid cloud and this movement of data. But I've absolutely seen an absolute increase in it over the last few years, and particularly in 2020 in this current situation. The, the major difference from an IBM perspective is, I would say, is our openness and, our, um, and our, um, how we're dealing with the openness in the community and our commitment to open source our flexibility, our security, and the way we actually deal with the enterprise. And one of the major differentiations is the security to the core. Actually building up the security, looking at the secure elements, making sure that data is safe from tampering, it's encrypted, both in transit and at rest. And these are many of the factors that um, our enterprise clients actually demand of us and particularly when we look at the regulated industries with a heavy focus on the financial services sector. And Veeam, with its capabilities and ability to both do the backup and migration functionality, sort of clients are expecting a two-for-one deal in these days where they're trying to cut costs and get out of their own data centers in an effort to cut their costs. Excellent. Well, Simon, uh, you know, you, you laid out uh, really the imperative for enterprises, uh, you know, today and how they're dealing with that. Uh, bring us in as to, you know, what differentiates the, the you know, IBM Veeam relationship uh, versus just, you know, you know I, IBM is, you know, open and flexible. So there are a lot of options, you know, what particularly uh, is there about Veeam uh, that, that, that makes that relationship special? Well, um... I think it all down, down to the partnership and the deep willingness we're, to work together. Um, the research that we're doing in the products, yeah, looking at ways that we can take Veeam beyond the, via, beyond the VMware space and into bare metals and containers, but maintaining that level of security and flexibility that clients demand. I mean, many clients, if they've invested um, in a particular technology to do their backups, Backup and DR, because of the heavy data requirements, are still one of the most important, if not the most important use case that many cloud users or many of our clients actually go for. So having that partnership with Veeam in not only dealing with the traditional base, which is the VMware backups, but really pushing the boundaries and looking how we can extend that into migrations, into containers and bare metal, by still keeping that level of security and flexibility. It's, it's a difficult balance. Um, sometimes to make it more secure, you have to make things less flexible and vice versa, having things more flexible, they become less secure. So being willing to work us and actually define that, that, that difficult balance and still provide the level of 
the, the user experience and the level of functionality that our clients demand and keeping both client sets happy, both IBM and Veeam. It's, it's challenging at times, but I guess it's what makes the job interesting and exciting. Yeah, Simon, I'm actually glad you, you, you mentioned containers as one of the you know, modernization efforts going on there. Of course, from Veeam's standpoint, when vSphere 7 rolls out, uh, that they, they are being supported and you know, one of the first to, to work in that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your viewpoint, what you're hearing from customers, how you expect uh, as a VMware partner uh, for, for cloud, uh, that movement of VMs and containers and how they're going together. Uh, what should we be looking for as, as that kind of uh, matures and progresses? So I would absolutely watch, watch this space, um, particularly um, as, we move in, as we move into this, um, containers and VMs living very much side by side. With VMware's announcements around Project Pacific and Tanzu, it's, it's very interesting. It's certainly created a furore around the market. And we're, we as IBM are very closely working with them with um, our acquisition last year of Red Hat and its containerization platform all while maintaining our ability in the, the OpenShift community around Kubernetes. So, um, Stu, um, obviously I'm privy to a, a lot more information, which um, I, really, I really can't really say and dig into too much detail around, around this particular angle, but just to say that watch the space, there's a lot going to happen. You're going to see a lot of announcements in the, the back half of 2020 and in the, the first few halves of 2021 particularly around the collaborations between containers and VMs and seeing how the different offerings from the different companies shape. Interesting awesome. times ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Simon, maybe, right, don't want to get you in trouble as to looking too much in the future, but maybe bring us into, I'm sure you're having lots of conversations with customers. What's their mindset? You, you talked about, you know, there's bare metals, virtualization containers, you know, yeah. application modernization. Uh, I, I've always said the long haul in the tent of any uh, you know, transformation and modernization that they're doing. So, you know, what are some of the, the challenges and opportunities that you're hearing from customers that, that, that you and your partner are helping to solve? So, um, well, the, one of the, some of the challenges around this containerization is um, containerization is taking, is taking a lot longer and it's taking a lot more time than we originally anticipated or expected. So the realization is actually hitting that VMware is going to be around for, for a while. I mean, the idea that people are thinking that they're just going to transform their applications or all their VMs over a six or 12 month period is just not reality. So we're living in this hybrid platform way where you have VMware, you have virtual machines and containers coexisting. Certain parts of the application, namely the, um, the Ingr or if I take the three-tier web app as an example, consisting of a HTTP server, an application server, and a database, when you containerize that or modernize that, it's very easy to modernize the HTTP server, which turns into the ingress, egress service on the container. It's very easy to modernize the application server, which is fairly static, and you can just put a container. But as we know, Stu, data is sticky. So what are many enterprises, the data migration or the way that the database is transformed is the thing that takes the longest. So we're seeing out there in the enterprises, people who are running their apps, both with the ingress, egress service, the application server containerized, but the database still living on a virtual machine for a extended period of time. And until they've made the final jump or shown their data service, they make that move. I do see this being, um, I, I personally, I honestly don't believe in my lifetime, VMs will actually disappear because we're seeing that in some cases, it's actually too costly for organizations to actually transform their applications or there's no real business case. It works perfectly well with the existing processes. There's no need to modernize, but they're looking at ways and what parts of the architecture can be modernized and containers are definitely the future for all the attributes that we know and love but there is going to be this hybrid world. So having tools and partners like Veeam who are willing to cross the ecosphere of the different platforms is, is critical for our clients today and critical for partnerships that we have, like the one we have with Veeam. All right, well, well Simon, it goes, it goes back to one of those IT maxims is, you know, IT is always additive. We almost never really get rid of anything. Uh, we just keep adding to it and changing it. And as you said, 
data is that critical component. And uh, I think you highlighted nicely how, you know, Veeam fits in, you know, very much for that story. So Simon, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure having you on the program. Glad to have you in the CUBE alumni ranks at this point. Thank, thank you, Stu, and thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care. All right, stay tuned for lots more coverage from Veeamon 2020 online. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE. Thank you.